processing in communication systems, formation of data packets. So when data is encoded for transmission, it's not being sent in individual bits or bytes. It's instead being grouped together as data packets. Now these data packets can be in a variety of lengths based on the communication protocols being used or in conjunction with a specific transmission medium or some network settings that have been established on a certain network. Okay, but basically with these data packets, there's three different sections to it, which we're gonna go over now. So firstly is the header, which contains addressing information of both the sender and the receiver, which is in the form of an IP address. Each packet, as we've already said, is at a specific length, and in the case of IP, that's 16-bit. What also accompanies that is the actual start and end frames, which helps the synchronization between the actual sender and the receiver, so they can synchronize their clocks, and obviously then there's a rhythm to the actual groups of packets being sent between each other. We've already mentioned the IP protocol, because um, obviously a transmission protocol needs to be used okay for the sending of data otherwise we don't have any rules for the governing of the transfer between data okay so this is also established and also the states there might be more than one protocol being used too depending on how the data is being set each packet also needs to be numbered because a single packet doesn't reflect the whole message being sent. Okay, it is being broken up into these data packets. So they need to be numbered in a specific sequence so that at the end in the receiver, they can put all the packets back together and then transform the message back into its readable form. The next section is the body. Okay, these are the bytes of data being transmitted and essentially the message okay, in its digital form being transmitted. Okay, so this is where our message actually is. And this is why it's often referred to as the payload. It's the important part and we need to make sure that the message gets to the other end correctly, otherwise it will not be understood. And then the final section is the trailer, okay? The bit that hangs out the back, like when you've got your car and you've got a trailer on the back, okay? It accompanies it at the back. And the trailer really does two main objectives, okay? It lets the actual receiver know that it's the end of the packet, okay? And this is the end of the data packet coming through. But it also includes the relevant type of error detection being used, okay? Such as checksum or a CRC value. Okay, so this calculation would have taken place on the transmitter's end, okay, and they would have calculated this value. Then it obviously sends this to the receiver, and then the receiver has to do that same calculation. And then they will check that checksum or CRC value that's been delivered to them. If they get any value that is not the same, well, that means there was an error in data transmission. It will then discard the data packet and then ask for it to be sent again. Okay, so the error detection is probably the most important part of the trailer. Okay, so they are our three sections in the formation of data packets, but let's try to illustrate that now. So below is how a packet may be arranged. Okay, so here is my data packet. It's empty at the moment, but we're going to start putting things into it. So firstly is the header, and as said, we're going to be using a specific transmission protocol, which in this case we're looking at IP. Okay, we're going to have the sender's IP address, okay, and the receiver's IP address. Okay, they are both included, so we know that where this message is going and where it came from. Okay, after that, We've got the start and end frames, which let the clocks synchronize on both the sender and receiver systems. We've set our packet length to 16 bit, which is the maximum amount for the IP protocol. Okay, and this would say is packet number 12. Okay, there's been 11 packets before it, okay, as a part of this message, and this is the 12th one, and there'll probably be more after it as well. So all of that is contained within the header even before we've sent our actual message. It's in this second section of the body that we are sending our message, and it is sent as data. So there it is in digital binary form, okay, but that actually reflects the actual message that we are sending across. And then in the final section, we have our trailer, and that has the end packet data to say, this is the end of the packet. And then also our error detection method, which for IP uses checksum, okay, when using in conjunction with the TCP protocol, just to clarify on that. Okay, and then there is our value, which I think equates to 192. So the receiver will check the data packets being sent. It will conduct its calculation. Okay, and it will make sure that it gets 192 as well. Okay, and if that goes correctly, that means the packet is correct. Okay, so we're now going to obviously send that data off to the specific IP address that we've set is the receiver's IP address. And then they're going to get this data packet and hopefully it gets them correctly. So I hope this is giving you an understanding of the formation of data packets. Essentially that it's not just the message that's being sent. There is a lot of information that is in the header. Okay, and obviously the header and the trailer provide a lot of data, which ensures that the message is sent to the correct location, that the rules of the network are being followed and that the message gets to its destination correctly. Okay, so let's send that off now.